<clears throat> okay. Continuing on with Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we're, we're, we're coming to the end here. It's this sermon and one more sermon left in this uh, months long journey that we've been on. Um, we have to say that uh, again uh, the I have to rely on the promise uh, that Jesus Jesus spoke himself. He says that uh, um, the Father gave him all that would be saved and that none will be plucked out of his hand. That he is the one that's going to sustain us and keep us. Um, but it's still, there's a reverence here on this passage um, that we need to meditate on. Um, that, that, that self-reflection that I ask that we all have uh, our minds need to be fixed on what God's called us to do who God's called us to be and we don't veer to the right or the left that our hope our trust is fully in him that the the, the bumps, bruises, scars, the thorns along the way. It's all working out for his glory, right? Him and him alone. That each day I'm more like my Savior than I was the day before. That's my prayer. And Lord, forgive me when I fail. So, couldn't find a better title for this sermon. It's I Never Knew You. Man. I'm going to have a hard time getting through this one. So, main passage is Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23. We're going to look at uh, Luke 6, verse 46. Matthew, chapter 12, verse 50. Romans, chapter 2, verses 12 through 29. James chapter 1, verses 21 through 27. Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Luke chapter 13, verses 22 through 30. Prophet Malachi, chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Back to Matthew, chapter 10, verses 16 through 39. Psalm 101. Matthew 25. 31 through 46. Psalm 6. And Psalm 5. And I said there's a there's a lot here. But it's not all of it. For three verses to have 20 passages tied to it, and that's just from my Bible, the ESV version that I read from. 20 passages 
connected to three verses. Whoa. It's, it's not just simple. It's, it's not just a simple reading of three verses. He says, we'll seek, when we seek him with all our heart, we'll find him, right? Whoa. That's That hit me in my core as I was preparing this morning. We don't hardly put the effort at all into reading the Bible as it's as it's given to us. We don't we read a passage and we might sit and soak on that passage, but but due to the work of faithful men long before us. We can do the, the, the easy works given to us in most of our Bibles. We can take the time to look. And I think this is what it, it overwhelmed me as I read as I read each and individual, every passage that I cited to you, plus the others. <clears throat> this morning, I was overwhelmed. Completely overwhelmed. That's the one that those four words are the one we don't want to hear when all this is said and done. But many of us are lazy when it comes to applying scriptural truths to our lives. We don't want to work it out. Lord, purge for me. Purge for me that cheap grace model that is preached from pulpits today. Purge from me that. I don't want it. Yes, your mercy and your grace, it sustains me. But Father, I want to know what that means. All that it entails. As we covered last week, he said, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. And then we discussed a few weeks prior when Jesus was talking about the woe to the Pharisees. That they went way past what God said. And were putting unnecessary burdens on the people. And then all those unnecessary burdens on the people that they put. He said, and all of your proselytizing. And all of your going about. Chasing after one person. You've made them. You've made them. Uh, a a two-fold son, son of Satan. Because of all the extra stuff that you keep placing on these people. And I just simply, look, if you love me, keep my commandments. He condensed them for us. He condensed them for us. And they tried to trick him. He said, what's the greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the first four, as we discussed last week. And then love your neighbor. Second one's like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's the last six commandments. He hit them with all of it. You can't take away from it. And then we, he said, we discussed last week a tree, a good tree is going to produce good fruit. Bad tree is going to produce bad fruit. And a, and a good tree is not going to produce bad fruit. And a bad tree is not going to produce good fruit. There's no middling around with all this. There's no taking it lightly. And I say this because the one we put our trust in laid his life down for us as the model. There's no halfway. In fact, there's no, there's no halfway Christian. There's no halfway saint. You either in or you out. Which brings us to today. Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, <clears throat> will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. 
On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. <clears throat> that you can't sit, come and expect that you just sat in a church pew gave offerings every now and then volunteered sparsely and think that you got your ticket punched not how it works. In fact, Jesus says, if any man wants to come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. Follow him. That's not arbitrary mentions of Jesus in your social media. That's not having a Jesus fish on the back of your car. All superficial stuff. What did he say to the Pharisees when he gave, pronounced the woes to them? He said, on the outside, you worry about cleaning the outside. The inside's filthy. It stinks. It's full of dead man's bones. Whitewashed tombs, hypocrites. You gotta gather where they wanted to kill him. Is they think all of your outward signs, no good. You even go back that in when God gives the law to Moses, it was obedience. It was about obedience. It's about the circumcision of the heart, not the outward signs. <clears throat> None of the outward stuff. And we're going to get to that because Paul reiterates it in Romans. There's a seriousness here that we take for granted. We take for granted because we've said a two minute prayer and have been dumped in a baptistry. stuff should be a sign of the inward stuff. But if you're empty on the inside, if you don't love him with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, then you're that cup that's clean on the outside and full of filth on the inside. Turn me to Luke 6, 46. You know I don't like isolating on one verse, but it's to a point. The good person out of the good treasures of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of the evil treasures produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. All right. That was what? That was 45. That was 45. Yeah. Never mind. Why do you call me Lord? Well, it ties in. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? On that day, many of you will say to me, Lord, Lord, 
Did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I think many today are affected with an outward Christianity. And the inward is rotten to the core. How can I say this? You have churches justifying sin to this day, doing things that ought not be done, not calling sin, sin. Mothers and fathers not leaving their homes as they should. Saying, saying one thing and doing another. You can't pretend to be a bride of Christ. And the inner self has not been purified the way Christ commands it to be purified. Can't be done. You fall into that category of the Lord, Lord. Didn't we do this and didn't we do that? Outward work. Outward work. Many people think because they volunteer in a church building that somehow it's a penance and they punch their ticket. That's the outward stuff. That's what he's saying in verse 22. Well, didn't we volunteer? Didn't we feed the homeless or give a clothes away? Or, you know, did this and this and this? And he's like, I'll declare you apart from me. I never knew you. You can be the best volunteer on the planet. If you don't have Christ in the inside. It's all for naught. He says, if you love me, you obey my commandments. You trot that out. Do you bear false witness? Do you gossip? Do you practice sexual immorality? Everything that falls underneath that umbrella, <coughs> do you justify it? Do you cover your neighbor's stuff? Do you love your neighbor? Jesus up the ante earlier on in the sermon, right? If you hate your brother, you've already committed murder in your heart. That deals with one of the commandments. If you looked upon another woman and lusted after her, you already committed adultery. not superficial faith, people. It's not. Hey, what did Jesus, or God say in Isaiah? You, 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 you praise me with your lips. But you deny me with the way you live. We well, say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Walking around and sing hymns all day. If they're in her heart, is not changed. Then words don't mean anything. Because you can say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus and be doing some of the God awful stuff. Heart circumcision of the heart. God change me. Not wanting to chase after. 
You and you alone. You are my salvation. My rock. Look at Matthew chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 50. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven. Can't just live through people. Please don't get me confused. I'm not talking works salvation here. I'm not. I'm not talking legalism. I'm not. Nothing could be further from that. Let's look at Romans chapter 2. So we just dive in. Starting in verse 12. For all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God. But the doers of the law who will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do what the law requires, they are not they, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. And this is a separation here. He's calling them out. You can be religious all you want to. You can be religious all you want to. You can be in church every week. It does not mean you are in Christ. That's scary. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. What did he say in Jeremiah? There was going to come a time underneath that new covenant where his law was going to be written on the law. Here we see it. Laying, laying it out as the church age is beginning. Where have we gone? On that day when according to my gospel God judges the secrets of men by Christ Jesus. But if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast in God. And know his will and approve what is excellent because you are instructed from the law. And if you are sure that you yourself are a guide to the blind and a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law the embodiment and knowledge and truth, you then who teach others, do you not teach yourself? While you preach against stealing, do you steal? You who say that one must not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? Don't have to go very far down, long down the line of history to see how that plays out, right? You, you who abhor, abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, dishonor God by breaking the law. For as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Christ is blasphemed because of you. 
because of me. For circumcision indeed is of value if you obey the law. But if you break the law, your circumcision becomes uncircumcision. So if a man who is uncircumcised keeps the precepts of the law, will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? Obedience. Obedience. Then he who is physically uncircumcised but keeps the law will condemn you who have the written code and circumcision but break the law. For no one is a Jew who is a merely one outwardly, nor is circumcision outward and physical. But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart, by the spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. truth to practice falsehood. Gossip. You want what's not yours in the first place. Prefer obedience to sacrifice. start of the Sermon on the Mount, do not think I've come to abolish the law. I've come to fulfill it. And only through Christ can we follow the law. But it can't be just lip service. It can't be. And if you find yourself as a lip service Christian today, I will plead with you Get on your knees. Get on your knees and repent. And renew yourself in light of what he commands. Live a life like the sun lived. James chapter 1. Starting in verse 21. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he looks like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being not a hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. And to keep oneself unstained from the world. I never knew you. 
what he describes in verse, uh, verse 22, on that day, you will say to me, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name? Pep, 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 run them out. Do we not cast out demons in your name? And do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Is this making sense? Am I, is this clear, a clear message? Turn with me to Matthew chapter 25. Starting in verse 1, then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgin, virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in and with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Most of us live our lives as if we've got time. Right? Well, I'll get that right tomorrow. I'll go reconcile this situation tomorrow. I'll repent tomorrow. What he's describing in this parable is religious versus followers. The religious go on and live life unprepared. Have the mindset, I can get I can do this tomorrow. I don't really need this right now. Instead of being prepared. Contrast that with Matthew 7. Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name? Do we not do all these things? Doing the outward stuff, the inward stuff is all jacked. I never knew you. Christian. I want to follow you with all that I am. But I know there's nothing else good out there. Nothing. Nothing that can satisfy. Nothing at all.
can't love what the world loves, and think that we're in Him at all. This is playing out in spades right now in the world we live in right now. Christian, you're called out. God has not given me a spirit of fear. He's given me a sound mind. I will not panic. For my trust is in him. Do you live like that? difference is those running around in panic they're saying Jesus Jesus now I don't have to draw a parallel any further do I we're to be obedient to the father even unto death firmly fixed on my Father in heaven. I will not be a panicked chicken little because I know who holds the future and I know who set the order of my days and I know that he knows the number of the hairs on my head. chapter 13. Here's the model. Luke Chapter 13, starting in verse 22. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For the life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they are neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. How, how much more value are you than the birds? I'm in the wrong chapter again. Sorry. That's a great Sorry. chapter. But... It is a good chapter, though. Sorry about that. <laughs> chapter 13, start at verse 22. Sorry. He went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But I, he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and west, from the north and south and recline at the table in the kingdom of God. 
And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. You see all of there's a there's a weight here. I'll just several passages I never knew. Never knew. This comes from There's a weight that we don't want to think about that presses up against our sinful selves. You know that side of yourself. The one that doesn't want to obey his command. That inner self that likes to clap back at the Lord when he's kind of speaking in your ear. The one that tries to negotiate with God. Really? Sorry. But in all the scripture, Christian will cost you your life. All of your life. Not just some. Not just the parts where it's convenient. Where you feel safe. I can hear it already. I've got grace, man. I've got mercy, man. You don't understand grace and mercy. what grace and mercy is. Grace is God opening your eyes in the morning. When he should have killed you in sleep last night. For all your treasonous acts against him. And a failing to honor him in all that you do. Everything we do should be done to the glory of the Lord. Everything should be a marker in our life. And our life should be a picture of that. But is it? to pass through our ears or we allow our eyes to see how quickly do we speak out in anger you go just a verse a couple verses above what I covered in James everyone should be quick to hear slow to speak slow to anger for the anger of men does not produce the righteousness of God Often do we speak loose words in anger. I'm sorry. There's a tension here that I, it's not me that said it. I'm simply, for the most part, reading straight scripture. I think if I try to craft it in my own words, I often mess it up. Lord, let us honor you with our lives and all that we do every day. Every day. Not just on the days we feel like it. Not on the days, not just on the days when I decide that it's time to pray. But the Bible tells me I should pray without ceasing. Continually lifting up praise to Him. Lives marked.
by the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ. Not flipping out on somebody when they don't do something you want. Or speaking against a brother or sister and not knowing their circumstances. Reaching out in love. It's not simply that we can say the name Jesus. Look at Malachi. Chapter 3. Now this is some hundreds of years before Jesus shows up on the scene, right? There was a gap there when the last prophet died <clears throat> to John the Baptist and Jesus showing up on the scene. Now, you take this passage and you flip over into Revelation, but you'll see where I'm going, okay? Then, uh, starting in uh, verse 16 of chapter 3, Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another, the Lord paid attention and heard them, and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Then once more you shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked between one who serves God and one who does not serve Him. There's a distinction. A very marked distinction. You turn over in the Revelation, not going there, but everyone whose name was not found in the Lamb's Book of Life craziness to a worldly man to a man stuck in his own sinful ways this is but he says that this is going to be foolishness to anyone that's not saved They're just not going to get it there's just words piercing your heart today thank God Matthew chapter 10 Behold, starting in verse 16, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, and what you are to say, for what you are to say, will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death. And the father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated for all of my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If you have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? That first part of 25 is enough for the disciple to be his teacher and the servant to be like his master. And then go to Malachi again and read that passage. All those who serve. 
serve God. That's act, action. Not lip service, action. As we're winding down, turn to Psalm number mm-hmm. one. It's a short psalm, so we got. It's a short psalm, so uh, we got titles above them. It says, "I will walk with integrity." I will sing. Of steadfast love and justice to you, O Lord, I will make music. I will ponder the way that is blameless. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. Whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. I will look with favor on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. No one who practices deceit shall dwell in my house. No one who utters lies shall continue before my eyes. Morning by morning, I will destroy all the wicked in the land, cutting off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. You think he doesn't have some seriousness about the holiness that is supposed to be an outpouring in our lives? What did Peter say? Be holy for I am holy. Not just lip service. Lip service gets you the passage that we're discussing today. Matthew 25. And I know we're flipping a lot, but it's to a point. So verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate from one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you drink? And when did we say, see you a stranger, and welcome you, or naked, and clothed you? And when... Did we see you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them. Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on the left, depart from me. You cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they will all answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into the eternal punishment. But with righteous but the righteous into eternal life. Can't be a lip service Christian. Can't just have 
have the thought. There's a weight here that we need to understand. There's a stripping away in our own, in our lives, each of our individual lives that needs to happen. Has to happen. We can't keep tripping along in the same pattern of sin. The, that's the ones in Matthew 7, 22. I didn't do this religious activity, but if I don't have a heart for God and after God, then every little thing that I do with my hands doesn't mean a thing. Psalm 6 and Psalm 5. Six, verse 1. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger nor discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled, but you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, deliver my life. Save me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who will give you praise? I am weary of with my moaning every night, I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. It grows weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. For the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and greatly troubled. They shall turn back and be put to shame in a moment. Focus there on verse 8. Jesus was quoting directly from David himself. In verse 22. Or no, verse 23. Part. Psalm 5. This is our prayer. Lead me in your righteousness. Give ear to my words, Lord. Consider my groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry. My King and my God, for you do I pray. How often do we pray that? Lord, just give me you. That's all I want. That's all I need. Is you. How often have you gone before the Lord? Have you grieved? What do you say? Have you gone to him and just wept? Giving him honor and glory? save you. There's no two minute prayer that's going to save you. There's no 
repetitive dunking is going to save you only Jesus Christ. And we have to be, we have to come to him broken. Because a stiff-necked person is not going to acknowledge his failures, his faults to Jesus Christ. You cannot be stiff. fights against him daily. When he speaks to us, do we listen? Do we obey? Because it's not just here is only, right? We covered that. Not here is only. The doers. Oh Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you to watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. Your God is love, man. <clears throat> some hippie sky fairy. <coughs> he calls all men unto repentance. Not all men will repent. Are you stiff necked against him? He's not obeying his clear teachings and commands. Do you not deny yourself? Pick up your cross and follow after him. Following in the clear pattern that he set for us. That nothing's more important than the will of the Father. Read it. He wept and was in anguish in the Garden of Gethsemane. Praying for the cup to pass from him. But nevertheless, not my will, Father. But your will. What's that sin you don't want to let go of? That hate in your heart. We all have it. For one person. Reserved for one person. What did Jesus say about hate? destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in, fear, in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of mine enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth. Their inmost self is destruction. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Their service Christians. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of the abundance of their transgression, cast them out. For they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them. That those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. 
You cover them with favor as with a shield. into consideration. Are you covered in the blood of the Lamb? We do we obey God rather than me? This is this is the seriousness of which we're we're dealing with this passage is not an easy passage. I didn't even go through all the verses on it. When it's all tied back. To not being someone that prays them with our lips and denies them with our living. church the next morning. Can't be watching all kinds of filth one day and singing hymns the next. We can't gossip against our neighbor one day and then say glory hallelujah the next. We can't lie one day. And they sing his praises. The next. There should be a continual process of sanctification in our lives playing out. More and more, we're not who we used to be. Thank the Lord. Because it's through his power that we can do it, right? Because if we try to trek this off on our own, it ain't happening. I've tried and failed, tried and failed, and tried and failed that enough times to choke somebody out. I can't do it on my own. But God gave me a promise. He'd keep me in perfect peace. His mind is set on Him. Set on Him. Not set on Him and everything else. Set on Him. Not set on Him in the things I think I can control with my own hand. Set on him. He doesn't give you the option to insert yourself. It's him. It's him alone that gets the glory. Him alone. And I'm afraid. As I was convicted of reading all these passages and preparing for today, that are many of us limp along. A lot of us pay lip service and don't put boots to dirt and hands to the work of Christ. Far too many. And there's nothing new under the sun, right? Nothing new. The same thing that I'm saying today, Paul said to the church in Rome back over 2,000 years ago. We covered it today in Romans, in Romans chapter 2. a shame to our testimony when we could find somebody outside the body of Christ who's more obedient unknowingly more obedient to God than we ourselves are shame on us shame on us we 
say we love him, but we don't put we don't put any any real faith behind what we profess. And no skin in the game. No skin in the game. You covered that too. You love him. You're doing as he commands. They're gonna drag you through a court. People are gonna hate you. The world's gonna hate you. But you don't hate in return. You love. You do as I command you. You speak the truth. You give them the gospel. Why is the name of Jesus cursed all the day long? Mocked all the day long in our generation? Go look at them. the truth of it. Now I'm sorry to be the downer pastor on Mother's Day. And that was not my intention. I tried to go a different way and God said no. How do we sustain our faith? We'll get into that next week. Every thought, every deed. Foundation, Christ. We sang it this morning on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. You can't have one foot in faith and the other in the world. That's the verse 23 all about that. So much packed into three verses. So much heart checking in three verses. I would never thought of. But thank you, God, for the clear instruction of your word. I know now what we must do. And now you know now. Lord, thank you for the clear instruction of your word. Lord, forgive us for all the days where we've taken you for granted. Taking your word for granted. Father, going on our own way down a path that surely leads to destruction. Thank you for your son who has plucked us out of that. Lord, help us to live a life that honors you with thankful hearts for the gift freely given, which is your son. He's given us the pathway. He's marked out the path. Lord, help us to be not ignorant of that path. <clears throat> help us to be ones that focus on what you have to say. You have to say, and Lord, give us the courage to not let just be, let it just be lip service. Let us not be just hearers of the gospel, but doers. Take these words today, Lord, write them on the walls of our hearts. Put them in our minds, Lord, that we may think, meditate on, and 
hold it up to ourselves as a mirror. And Lord, as the days, whatever days you bless us with left on this planet, let it be about living all of this life to your glory, not to our own. And we ask all these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.